Hi guys, it seems like it's been a while and the reason for that is I was a little under the weather after my second COVID vaccination jab. The first was completely symptom free and the second gave me a bit of a fever. Fortunately, I'm over that now and ready to catch up on some long overdue reviews. Now the last time we looked at a baby and Kylosaur. Today, let's look at an adult. Specifically, we're looking at the Vaite Jinyun Pelter an ankylosaurian dinosaur from the Jinyun County in Zhejiang, China. Vaite is a company well known for the quality of its paint jobs on both the dinosaurs and their bases. Now, of course, the detail of their sculpts is also noteworthy, although the accuracy is sometimes iffy. For example, the very beautifully painted Giganotosaurus was a no for me because of the unfortunate shape of the head. And in a way, that's helpful because I really am running out of space. So I like getting one or two really good representative pieces from a company and then saving the space for others. Now, PNSO was a real exception because every single piece was really good on many fronts. Now, since Tinyun Pelter is a species I don't have, it was a no brainer. Tinyun Pelter is estimated to be about 3.5 to 4.5 meters, now, that's 11 to 15 feet long. Measured along the curve, this model is about 19 centimeters or 7.5 inches, making this model 1 to 18 or 1 to 24th scale. So, it's on a bigger scale than many PNSOs we've recently seen. Now, let's look at the color first. Very obviously, this dinosaur is countershaded, with a copper golden brown on the dorsal surface, and uh, on the underneath is a lighter, kind of a beige color. There are transverse bands of white across the top, and unfortunately in my case, uh, you can see that the degree of translucency is not consistent. Some of it, like here, uh, is very obviously dabbed on, so it's not very nice looking. Still, in general, you can see the various subtle variations of fades down the animal, from the head, down to the neck, and all the way down. And even these large scutes have a very pleasing mix of fades, just like a living animal would. Well, that's much nicer than something more typical like this wild safari ankylosaurus, where it's just one dab of paint with no variation within. And even though the scutes are a different color from the surrounding, just look at the joining interface. The color is blended in a way that really looks natural. Now the tail here has a bit of subtlety going on. Um, really, it's a lot easier to see when you actually have it in hand. On the opposite end, you can likewise see how the detail on the head is brought out by some dry brushing in a darker color. And there are just these patches of color variations which really look very nice. Um, if you look at the broad beak, you see also a mix of two washes that give it a depth of color that you don't often get on many models. On the other side, you can see the variation in color starting from the throat and then down in the chest area, in the belly, and then all the way down to the tail. And some of these fades are very subtle and uh, you actually have to have it in hand to really see them properly. Now, in areas like limbs, these splotches of darker brown do a great job of bringing out some of that sculpted detail, which then leads your eye to other areas. And we can see on the other side, um, the same thing. Now, as nice as all this is, I believe I actually got the short end of the stick because I've seen pictures and reviews where the color is even better. For example, these cutes here are just way too brown and earlier runs had a much more yellow tint. Still, overall, it's a well-painted figure. Now, judicious color application can do much to highlight and elevate already great sculpting. 
For example, if we look again at this uh, unfortunate example, you can see that this wild safari Ankylosaurus, which is actually a fantastic sculpt by Doug Watson, has very poor paint application that unfortunately detracts from all that. Now in our Vitae Tinyun Pelter, you can see that the detail is really top-notch, which is saying a lot considering the superb models we've looked at so far. And you can see also how the colour serves to complement that. And uh, on the ventral surface, you can just look at all this wrinkling detail. Look at the scale detail on the ventral surface of the, of the mandible, the jaw area. You can look at these veins here in the belly. And if we go top side, uh, there is of course these large scutes. Um, beginning here with the cervical half rings. And then going down, you can see how each one is shaped differently, which you'd expect in real life. All of them are keeled, as you'd expect. But what really elevates it, especially in hand, are the little ossicles between the scutes. Now, have a look. Um, you can see how they vary, not just in shape, but size, even within the same region. And this is very different from what you see in other typical models, where these ossicles are more uniform. So really what this does is to impart a very real organic look to the model. The head is also very nicely detailed, although there are no discrete caputaguli. And that is correct, because discrete caputaguli are generally more present in the derived ankylosaurids, like ankylosaurus and euplocephalus. Well, that's important because so many figures overdo detail, giving basal ankylosaurs caputaguli when there were none kind of like the modelling equivalent of hyperforeignism, accenting a foreign word when it's unnecessary. And here, even in the tail, if you look closely, you'll see um, textures and lines and pitting, um, lending another touch of realism to an already superlative sculpt. Now, on this note, let's talk about that club. One characteristic of Tinyun Pelter is the hexagonal appearance of the tail club, viewed dorsally. Now here you'll see one major osteoderm tipped with a minor osteoderm on both sides. On the ventral surface, however, uh, it's the same as the top, which really isn't entirely accurate. Now there should be a difference with the two major osteoderms flanking a row of another two osteoderms here. The three more down here are accurate, however, as is the overall shape and also the dorsal-ventral flattening of the club. Now, Tinyun Pelter is significant because prior to its discovery, Pinacosaurus from the Campanian age of the Cretaceous was thought to be the oldest and the most basal and cardosaurid to possess a tail club. Now, Tinyun Pelter has now replaced Pinacosaurus in this respect, hailing from the Albion Cenomanian. This ankylosaur is walking in that mouth open, shrining pose I've seen in many pictures as a child, and I like that this ankylosaur reminds me of them. It really does look good from almost any angle. The tail is swinging from side to side, although the handle is stiff, as should be the case. Now, I especially love that this foot is lifted off the ground. It just it's so much more dynamic and suggestive of live action. As for the base, Vitae are about second to none when it comes to bases of mass-produced figures. I don't think I need to be gabbing too much for you to see the incredible detail and variation in textures and uh, in the browns here. And there's even some graying tones um, here, suggestive of underlying rock. And then there are these two clumps of vegetation, which, which you really want to be careful of because they look really brittle. And um, just look at the sculpted detail here, uh, suggestive of perhaps some exposed roots. 
And finally, let's compare him to some other ankylosaurs from another Chinese company. Now here we have the PNSO Pinacosaurus, another Asian ankylosaurid, which before Tinyun Pelter had the earliest documented tail club. That's in uh, this is a 1 to 30 year scale. And here's the PNSO Sorapelta, roughly about 1 to 36 scale. And here's the PNSO Ankylosaurus, which is also about 1 to 36 scale. Now all told, I'm really happy to add this representative of a Vaite model to my collection. It's a very interesting ankylosaurid, which as far as I know, hasn't been tackled by any other company. So it's nice that a Chinese company did it, with presumably easier access to the fossils, and also with their signature detail and paintwork. Now I can't afford to be a completist, even if I wanted to, and not all of the models hit the mark for me, but I think this one really does it. Now I have another Vaite that is truly, truly special and I can't wait to show that to you, perhaps in the next review. Take care guys and have a great week ahead.